I recently spent the holidays with my family and one of the many traditions that we've always had involves staying up until midnight. Okay, that was a bigger deal when I was a kid. While playing board games and eating a bunch of delicious homemade appetizers on New Year's Eve. To pay homage to this childhood tradition, I selected two appetizers from the Elder Scrolls cookbook that I'll attempt to make for my annual Elder Scrolls cooking video. As a Bosmer main, I've been eyeing those Bosmer bites for a while now, so you bet your ass I'm finally gonna be making those. And as someone who has made many an Argonian ERP reference in her videos, double cheeked up Argonian ba- Oh my god! I figured it would only be fair to try to make an Argonian dish as well, so I settled on the Argonian swamp shrimp boil. <laughs> now doesn't that sound appetizing? You already know what it is, those hardcore, green-packed Andes can't eat any of the vegetation in Balenwood, although sometimes exceptions are made for, say, fruits that naturally fall from their respective plants or trees, for example, which would explain why this recipe calls for peaches. Well, I don't live in Valenwood, I live in Skyrim, so safe to say there aren't going to be any fruits falling from any trees anywhere near me anytime soon. This means that the peaches that I used for this recipe were not ripe. It is what it is. This simple recipe called for some peaches, some brie cheese, some prosciutto, and a couple of ingredients that would be used to create a balsamic glaze. I started by making the glaze. I poured some balsamic vinegar, sugar, and a tiny amount of salt into a medium saucepan over medium-high heat while stirring continuously until it started to boil. I then lowered the heat and allowed the concoction to simmer until it had reduced to around half of its original size, which took roughly 20 minutes. Once it had, I set it aside to cool off. The recipe in the cookbook prompts you to cut dollops of cheese that will be used to assemble the Bosmer Bites, but for whatever reason, I failed to read the next part of the sentence, which clearly defined what the f a dollop is supposed to be, and I just winged it instead, resulting in some large, oddly shaped mounds of brie cheese. I then smeared a dollop of cheese on a slice of peach, enveloped it with a slice of prosciutto, and skewered it with a toothpick to make it look like a fancy little appetizer. Then I rinsed and repeated. Once all of the Bosmer bites were assembled, I drizzled some with the balsamic glaze and they were ready to serve. I think they look pretty nice and they were pretty damn tasty too. Brie cheese is one of my favorite things of all time and it tasted really nice with the salty prosciutto and the sweetness of the balsamic glaze. All of the components of that dish were hard carrying the peaches because they were not ripe and likewise it didn't taste all that great. The recipe in the cookbook offers a few other alternatives for the meat and cheese part of this dish and I'll definitely be making something like this again because of how simple and tasty it is. I'm definitely guilty of unironically making girl dinner type meals and the way I see it, the Bosmer Bites fit the bill. I give this dish an easy 7 out of 10. I actually forgore my cookbook at my place when I went to go visit my family, so I had to find the recipes from the book online. I'll leave a link to the resource that I used in the description, by the way. But as I was searching for them, I got sidetracked and took a look at a few of the images of the Argonian swamp shrimp oil that others had shared on the internet, and while some pics look all right, I guess. A lot of them look like doo-doo nasty poo-poo water and not at all like the image that accompanies the recipe. And listen, I'm absolutely not qualified to judge someone else's cooking skills, but it made me consider the possibility that the recipe itself was not all that great. A lot of the recipes in this book are a little on the gimmicky side, after all. This recipe called for some shrimp, soy sauce, cornstarch, brown sugar, molasses, dried thyme, chili powder, unsalted butter, and cream. Right off the bat, I figured that this swamp sauce, that sounds f***ing nasty, <laughs> would be incredibly rich. So I wasn't sure if I wanted my shrimps to be drowning in it or to have it be a kind of soup base. And this thought affected my approach to recreating this dish. I started by bringing two cups of water to boil in a saucepan before tossing in roughly one pound of shrimp that I had recently defrosted. After about three minutes, the shrimpies turned a nice bright pink color, so I scooped them out and let them cool off a bit. Once I could hold the shrimp in my hands without getting third degree burns, I removed their shells, their tails, and the odd poop vein that was still on a shrimp or two. 
This took me a hot minute, and the recipe insisted that I keep the shrimp stock boiling this entire time, but I turned down the heat because I feared that all of the water would just boil away by the time I was done. After all of the shrimps were out of their shells, I brought the shrimp stock back to a boil. In a small bowl, I stirred together some soy sauce and cornstarch until the cornstarch had been completely dissolved, and then I added it to the boiling water, along with some brown sugar, molasses, thyme, and chili powder. I then stirred this damn pot for a long time, around 25 minutes or so, which is longer than the cookbook recommends, until the mixture was no longer watery and had gotten nice and thick. Insert obligatory people after they eat Taco Bell joke here. Once the mixture had gotten nice and gloopy, I removed the saucepan from the heat and stirred in some butter and cream. The recipe then recommends either pouring the sauce directly on top of the shrimp or using it as a dipping sauce. I opted for the latter notion, and I'm glad that I did. The sauce was very rich and pretty tasty, but I don't think I would have liked these flavors in a watery, soup-like consistency. Nor do I think I would have liked to have been eating shrimp that were smothered in this thicker sauce, so I'm glad that I ultimately ultimately decided to not only continue to reduce the mixture for longer than was recommended, but I'm also glad that I decided to turn the swamp boil into more of a swamp dipping sauce. That still sounds so unappetizing. <laughs> because it allowed me to control the amount of sauce that I wanted on my shrimp. I would still recommend this dish though. Like the Bosmer Bites, it was quick and easy to make, and the flavors of the sauce paired nicely with the shrimp. I think I'd much rather dip some shrimp into a sauce like this one over the kind of ketchupy cocktail sauce that you normally get with shrimp appetizers. I'll give this dish an 8 out of 10. I've made a handful of appetizers from this cookbook at this point, and I think the two that I made in this video are among my favorites. I'm not quite sure that they beat out the iconic mud crab dip or the savory seared Nordic barnacles, but they're up there with the greats, that's for sure. If you're looking to throw an Elder Scrolls themed party and serve some neat Tez related snacks to your guests, there's some great material in this cookbook to work with, but you may find yourself having to make some minor adjustments to the recipes, as I have in the past. But that's all for today's video. These cooking videos are always really fun to put together every year, and I'm glad you all like them as well, even if they're a little different from the kind of stuff that you normally see on this channel. Thanks for watching, thank you to my YouTube members for the additional support, and I'll see you gamers in the next video. Cheers! Thank you.